Hello friends, it's Cindy Brumbaugh from CindyLeeBDesigns.com, independent stamping up demonstrator. Today's card is a fun fold using the Celebration Daffodil Afternoon DSP. It coordinates with the Daffodil Daydream Bundle that's in the annual catalog that has the stamp set with the daffodils and dies to cut the daffodils out. Of course, I do not have my daffodil card close by here to show you how cool those daffodils are. But if you look back on my blog post, you'll see them. And so I'm using this beautiful paper here with the floral here of mixed flowers here, the daffodils. Daffodil Afternoon, you can pick that up as a free gift when you make a $50 purchase of anything you want out of the mini catalog or the annual catalog from Stamping Up 20. 21 to 2022. And so I'm going to show you this quick and easy little fun fold here. My friend Janet had sent me a really fun card here and she did the same fun fold. She had the little bird that's from Celebration and you just open, oh see she always protects it with so the black doesn't rub off on this white on the inside. Put a little piece of copy paper in there. You just pop that back in the little hole. But she also used the new Celebration. Now this is the Friendly Hello stamp set that uses the um, bird image here from the stamp set, the sentiments from the stamp set, and this paper. Now you can get this bundle that has a stamp set and DSP when you make a hundred dollar purchase. So getting this card inspired me to try to make one my own. And I've been wanting to make a B because, well, you know, Cindy Lee B Designs. And you can find all the measurements and all of the products I use on my blog, Cindy Lee B Designs. So here we are using the new honeycomb embossing folder here and uh, the paper, and we're gonna make this little B. Now, how did we make this little B? I'll tell you how we made that little B. We just took our ladybug and turned him into a bee by giving him some little stripes on his body. So here we go. So I'm just going to move a few of these things off to the side here and we'll take a little peek here. This is super easy to make here. You're just going to start with a piece of basic black. And as I said, you can just run over to my blog right underneath the YouTube description. It has all of the products that I use and all the measurements, but also it'll say visit my blog here. You just press that link. It takes you right over to cindylebdesigns.com. You'll find additional photos and little tips there um, that I can't actually put into the YouTube um, format there. So we're just going to take a half sheet of our cardstock. This is four four and a quarter by 11. So four and a quarter by 11. We're gonna take the 11 inch side to the top of our trimmer because we want this card to end up being five and a half by four and a quarter. So it fits into our A2 size medium envelopes. So what we need to do is get that center part to be f uh, five and a half. So we're just gonna come in and just score at two and three quarters on each side. So we'll just use our, keep our dark cutting blade at the top so we don't accidentally cut. How many of you guys have done that? I feel like I can see your hands <laughs> raising up. And my trimmer is still cutting and scoring wonderfully, but just looking at it here, I'm not sure if you can see how grimy it is here. I need to do some cleaning there. So, um, but I don't have to worry about that right now, but look at all that guck in there. Just take a piece of, um, you can either take your, um, here I'm just using my take your pick tool and look at all of the dust and paper I got out of there. So just that'll keep your trimmer cleaning well if you clean out. Look at that. Oh my gosh, that's terrible. I need to do a little more housekeeping here. Okay, so now I'm getting off, off key here. But see how all, my, all that paper, but that can really impede making a nice clean cut and you get frayed edges. So remember that's probably one of the biggest things that's causing your blades not to seem to last as long. So we're just gonna score over two and three quarters on each side of the 11 inch side and we have a little gatefold. Now, since this is two and three quarters, by four and a quarter, the piece we're gonna put here that we've run through the honeycomb embossing folder is gonna be two and a half by four. Now, when you're trying to figure out which side is the correct side, if it's embossed, debossed, the correct side that you're supposed to be using has the stamping up side, stamping up logo on it when you're running it through your embossing folder. On this one, I think I put the 
opposite side. So I'm gonna actually turn and make this card with the other side because, you know, did you ever look and accidentally put it on backwards and it looks just as cool? So what I did is I just took my two, um, I did cut them before and I cut it two and a half by four and then I put them into my embossing folder and I put them really tight against each other and kept them as uh, straight as I could and then ran it through my embossing folder. For my stamp and cut emboss, I just removed the thin plate adapter, put it directly on the card, on the um, stamp and cut emboss plate. If you have a big shot, you would just um, not use the magnetic, but use your other one and either flip up one of the um, one of the layers of your multi-purpose, or you would just take out the thin plate adapter, put that directly on the platform base and the big thick one, and then just put your purple or your gray plate, um, because this one uh, needs that. Oh, actually, to tell you the truth, now I just am babbling on and on, but I just put it directly on my plate with no acrylic plate, yes. Oh, sorry about that. I just stuck this directly on my base with the purple plate on top, slash gray plate, they're the same thing. Okay, so there we go, we have our two, oh yeah, and I do, this is the right side up, and this was the other side. See the difference there? I do like it this way. So when I'm using something that's a nice thick embossing, I do like to use glue because it seems to get into the nooks and crannies um, and it adheres a little better than my actual tape runners or... So we're gonna put this one on with this side and I think a lot of you guys know I'm a Pittsburgher, so anytime I see black and gold, black and gold, it just starts uh, starts me thinking about how just growing up, anytime you had it on, even if you just wanted to wear something that had black and gold or yellow in it, everybody thought, oh, you're just representing the Steelers or the Pirates or the Penguins. We're just diehard Pittsburgh fans always. Okay, so here we go. We've got our two honeycombs there and I definitely like it better the correct way I like the way the honeycomb looks on there it's kind of got a different it's not totally uniform it's really got a nice 3d effect on it okay so the next thing we're going to do here is work on oh you know what why don't we just go ahead and um no we're going to work on this here so we need these little strips that are going to go across and I have them here and these black each black strip is one inch by four inches. Okay, so one inch by four inch. And what I did on my designer series paper, because these are three quarters by three and three quarters, I just sliced the whole way down on one 12 inch side, okay? I didn't match them up, like they don't match up as far as like, you could cut it all at once and then cut it down. But because I was doing my paper a different way, I just sliced a 12, uh, one a three quarters inch off the 12. So we'll just pop, these little, I love when you can make a card that the designer series paper makes a real statement on it, but you're not using like a whole entire, like four by five and a quarter inch piece. So we're just gonna put one there. Make sure DSP lasts a little longer. But the nice thing about this DSP is it's a freebie and boy, is it pretty. Oh has a lot of daffodil stuff in it, but it also has some fun, like I love the back of this one. It has a pretty uh, checked, checked pattern in it. A lot of the times our papers have the motif you're looking for, and then on the back has like little geometrics and things that, let's pull this up here, and I see I have a little bit of a fray there. See, that was probably from my paper trimmer not being clean. Okay, so we have our three strips there. And if you do have a little bit of that, I just use my little sanding brush right against that edge and it pulls it right off for me. So I've got my three edges here. And I like to put my strips, the top and the bottom on first, then I can wiggle around the middle and it'll still turn out nicely. Now this one I am going to use my Stampin' Seal Plus to keep it nice and tidy there. And um, now whenever you're looking here, these two are gonna be, um, this, these two are connected on the left side. 
So on the left side, you wanna have these two connected, the top and the bottom on the left. So I'm going to put some seal on there. Okay, so now we'll just give ourselves, we'll center it from left to right and just give about a half an inch at the top. Okay, and it's adhered on the left side. And then we'll do the same thing down here, leaving the same on the left and right and then the same on the bottom, okay? So there we go. Now, the part that's going to be, we're gonna have to put a piece here so that we can slide this in the hole here once we put this mechanism here. So what we're gonna do is then put it on the right side with our stamp and seal. And that'll be a nice, strong, um, keeping it together. And we'll just put that there. And I'm still seeing a little bit of gray there. Okay, so now you can see how it opens this way. All right, now we wanna put these two, adhere them together so that the only, this one is the one that slides in, if that makes sense. So what I did is I used, and I can't, remember the name of this label punch. I will have it in the description, but we're just going to put that label. I just lined it up right and centered it so that the edges here, you can use any, you could use a circle, you could use any shape here. So I'm just going to put some stamp and seal right on there. And like I said, any shape that you want to put on there, you can. And I don't think that was the wisest thing to do. I should have put it onto my, but you know what? I'll do a little bit of surgery here and I'll get that off before my photo shoot afterwards. <laughs> so there we go. Okay, so then now we, you can see how that mechanism is here, okay? Now the thing we're gonna do here, and that was a boo-boo, I really shouldn't have done that, but I can come back with my adhesive remover. Everybody thinks this is, technically a an eraser, but it actually just takes off your extra. You can get these anywhere now. We used to carry them now. If you keep your eye open at a dollar store, you can get them for a buck. My friend Stephanie was kind enough to buy me like four or five of them one time and bring them to class, which was wonderful. Sorry if I'm shaking the table as well, but might as well get that off there, okay. Anytime you see a little flick of something on your card and you rub it and you can't get it off, you think it's ink, and then you come over with this magic little adhesive remover and you just touch it and it comes off and you're like, yay, it wasn't ink, I didn't ruin my card. So then I went ahead and used a one and three quarter inch circle and put it on the label there. I was gonna put the honeycomb there, like do a circle and then emboss it. And then I just thought the flowers actually looked pretty cool there. Okay, so we've got that part done, but the fun part is doing this little bee. Like I said, as soon as I saw that ladybug, I just thought of a bee. I have all kinds of little bee things around. I have this wonderful little bee mug that a very dear friend, Linda, had um, sent me. And so I just, of course, looked at this and thought that ladybug could become a bee. So what I did is played around a little bit and I die cut my bee, okay? Then I just took a little strip of crushed curry here. Now, just use, you know, some scraps that you have in your stamping uh, scrap box, daffodil, crushed curry, bumblebee. Um, but the thing you wanna do is make sure you use one strip. So if you want them to all be uniform. So mine, I did one long strip and I knew that they would all be uniform, but you could do one thinner, a little thicker, thinner, whichever way you wanna do it. So what we're gonna do is put three of them across the bee's body, okay? So we're gonna put some glue here on that little strip and I'm gonna put it right up where his head meets his body. As you can see, I'm using my silicone craft mat so I don't get glue on my surface there. And we're just gonna put that little yellow stripe there, okay? 
Then we're going to take our paper snips and we're just going to be generous to leave yourself some room there. Then the next one we're going to put there. And as you can see, when you use one long strip and you know you have tons of these strips you've been saving. And I got a little bit extra glue there. So, so we're going to put, now I suggest, oop, I suggest not dropping it on there the way I just did. <laughs> you're going to leave this strip, the middle strip, pretty long and you're going to find out in a, re in a minute why we did that. Okay, then we're going to do our next little strip here. And the thing I like about this technique is we have these little strips and you can easily pop a bee together. You could perhaps use like a striped paper that you have. That could be fun. But this one, you always are able to do it. And I do have a little bit of adhesive here, but I'll get that off later. Now, do you notice how I do have some longer strips here? That reason being that I'm going to pop that back into my ladybug punch, okay? And I want something to hold on to, okay? So if you try to do this with stripes across black and you try to cut through two layers of cardstock, it did not work for me and it jammed my punch. So what I'm gonna do is I'm using these little handles and I'm sticking my B back into the punch. And sometimes you just have to wiggle it a little till you get it to where it's not sticking to any of the places. And you're gonna line it up the best you can, especially around his little body. Get his little, the little antenna where they're supposed to be. And it looks like I have it perfectly in there. Pop, and now these little edges, other than like here, you can just trim off if you have to. But the first, the other one I did just literally was perfect. So I'm kind of surprised that this one isn't too, because when you cut it all at one time, the other three I did turn out just perfect because I tried to snip it like this the whole way around and it just was not cooperating with me. But I think that, there we go. So we have our little bee. Now, what if you should put this in here and chop his antennas off? Um, how do I know that can happen? Hmm. I'll tell you how I know that can happen because it happened with me. And so that one, when I did that, is I just, let me see here. So what I did is I just came back and I cut off the bee's body. I was gonna do this one, but look here, this is daffodil. So what I did is I just came back and I trimmed that off and then I just adhered it onto there. So if you don't, like these little antenna went in perfectly, but another bee I did, I nipped one of the little bulbs off of his antenna. So um, I just came back in and I snipped right off at the top one and put it on right there and I had my bee back. So that is so cute, huh? And then of course you wanna put some little, and I, one thing about adhesive remover is you do have to wait till it's dry. If you start trying when it's wet, it doesn't work. Okay, so the next thing we wanna do is get our, Ooh. Okay, get these little scraps out of there. We want to get our lead, or, or I mean our wings, and we're just going to put the vellum into our punch, punch out some sweet little leaves. I keep calling them leaves, little wings. Now, if you get any of this bending because vellum is thinner, just come over and you can trim off some of that, that whitish part. And usually it turns out pretty well, but if it bugs you to have that strange like whitish appearance there. Now we're going to put these on here and you know vellum is always a tricky one when it comes to, um, I know my glue dots are up here. Um, vellum is really tricky um, because you can see through it. But I went ahead and still used my glue dots and I put a glue dot right in the middle of the wings. Okay and I put it right here on my bee. And then I thought to myself, oh, now I have that glue dot there. So what am I gonna do? So I just got out, because you know you want an embellishment on there. So I got out my favorite, favorite, favorite 
black matte dot the matte black dots and I just put one of these nice big old dots on there and that covered up my my little glue dot that came through because of the vellum so is that cool or what so you've got your sweet little bee to go in there now so now you can just pop that bee right onto the flowers and of course you're going to pop that up with some dimensionals here put one on his head maybe two down on his sweet little pollen covered bottom oh gosh we were watching a, a special one of those a documentary and it was about bees and butterflies and just how amazing all of that pollination that happens so our little bees are so important there so look at that little bee jumping off those little flowers and what i did for the inside i won't bore you with that but i just used my daffodil stamp set because you see the daffodil on the outside of the card. So I carried it onto the inside and I just used my dark daffodil blend. And then my, I think that was, do I have it sitting here? I think it was my um, light old olive. So light or dark because you see some, now here this is more of a mossy meadow in here. Um, so you could use whatever colors you want to kind of mimic these greens in here. So that gave a nice little inside. You could make this card. I didn't stamp a sentiment yet because it could be a birthday. It could be a thank you. It could just be cause, a just because card. <laughs> so there you go. How sweet was that? Just take a card base, score in two and three quarters on each side. You have a gatefold. Then decorate your gatefold sides two and a half by four. And then these strips are just four inches by one and your DSP is three quarters by three and three quarters. Pop on two of them on the left side, pop one on the right side. And then you just have this little mechanism which could be any shape popped onto there. And then you just take your little B and pop and you just take your little ladybug, your ladybug punch and make the body. Then start taking strips of yellow cardstock or whatever you want. I did try ribbon um, and I'm still playing around with this because the ribbon gives it a lot of texture, but I was finding it hard to um, bend it around without it kind of breaking. But that's another fun thing you could do with your um, ribbon, any type of a yellow colored crushed curry bumblebee ribbon that you have. And then if, then you put it right back in, you have your strips and hold, have pieces coming out from the side put it back into your punch and punch off those end strips that are hanging off. If you end up, you know, messing up the, uh, messing up one of the antenna when you put it back into punch, just chop off his head and then put it back onto another black one. So, so easy. So that makes that sweet ladybug punch so versatile because now it's a bee and I'm sure it can become more things too. So thank you for buzzing by. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to email me at cindyleeb at gmail.com. You can also text me or send me a photo of a card you made, maybe making the B or maybe using this technique. I love to get those happy um, texts that come through. That's 724 323-2296. Make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. I like to post a video on Wednesdays and then I, on my blog, you can also subscribe and then you'll be notified each time I blog Monday, Wednesday, Friday for sure. And also days in between if I have some stamping up news. Thanks for buzzing by friends.